All right, let's finish this case up. And then take a break from the series until I start the second game. Not sure when. <clears throat> this is defendant's lo lobby, all right, but there's no defendant. I've been trying to reach Lana all morning. Where could she be? And where's Emma, for that matter? It almost seems as if something's been happening behind the scenes. Edgeworth, knowing you, you've already figured it out. Who's the owner of the 777777 ID card? Is, that is. Well, I have a pretty strong hunch. Looks like I'm not the only one who's figured it out. You know, the only reason this trial didn't reach a verdict yesterday is because there was still room for doubt regarding the ID record. If that number does belong to whom you suspect, then no doubt will remain. After all, he hasn't been officially charged with anything. True, not yet. In any event, once all doubt has been removed from that list, I can call the ruling. Five minutes, right? And Chief Prosecutor Sky will be found guilty. But she didn't do it! I figured you'd say as much. That's why I came here, to hear what you have to say. This is the first time he's ever done something like this. Lana's hiding something, and the only way we'll ever know the truth is to draw it out of her. The truth? Everything goes back to the SL9 incident. But b don't be stupid. Today is the last day of the trial. We don't have time to reminisce about the past. That depends on you. If she's found guilty, you'll lose your only chance to find out what really happened. I'll think about it. See you in court, right? This is it. If I'm ever gonna find out what Chief Gant has on her, it's now. Court is now in session for the trial of Miss Lana Sky. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. Normally, this is when the prosecution puts forth its opening statement. But before that, the police chief has a proposal to make. Chief Gant. Morning, folks. How's everyone doing? Hey, Uji. Been back to the pool yet? No, I've been drowning enough in, as it is in my work. Oh, that's a good one. Don't think I can top that. If you don't mind me asking, Chief, exactly what is it this proposal of yours? Lana, that is to say the defendant, has asked me if she could speak directly to the court. She wants to do what? Having heard what she intends to say, I feel she should be granted her request. In the end, it should save everyone a lot of time and trouble. What's this all about, defendant? i just like to make one simple request and I'll be finished. Well then, what's your request? Your Honor, I'd like you to put an immediate end to this trial. Huh? I confess to all charges against me. On February 21st of this year, I murdered Detective Bruce Goodman in the underground parking lot of the prosecutor's office. No, Lana! You can't, Your Honor. The defendant's claims does not change the defense plea. In that case, Mr. Wright, I no longer require your services. But Lana, Your Honor, I hereby forfeit my right to an attorney. The prosecution may lack ev direct evidence against me, but it has sufficiently proven its case through testimony and circumstantial evidence. I would like you to render your verdict now, if you please. Hmm, well, the defendant clear certainly has the right to self-representation. Her request is legally valid, although this is a unprecedented situation. Indeed, it appears there's no need to further this continue this trial, even if Mr. Wright may feel otherwise. This can't be happening. It appears the time for the verdict has arrived. The court finds the defendant. Objection. One moment, Your Honor. M Mr. Edgeworth, the prosecution has not yet proven the defendant's guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. Any ruling at this stage would certainly be premature. Come on, come now, Worthy. I understand this is a difficult time for you, but why don't you just be a good little boy and keep your mouth shut, hmm? <laughs> hmm. I don't, I don't think I care for your tone, Chief Gant. What? 
creating another fabrication to cover up your past mistakes? Sorry, but I'm no longer the naive little boy you would have me be. With this sudden confession from the defendant, it is obvious to me some kind of deal was struck behind the scenes. Some kind of deal, hmm? Not everyone operates as you do, Worthy. Hmm, I thought so. Your Honor, the prosecution would like to change its first witness. Oh, to whom? As its first witness, the prosecution would like to call Miss Emma Skye. I request the court hears her testimony. Mr. Edgeworth, I am ex executing my right to self-representation. I don't think we need to con- I don't care what you think, Miss Skye. The exposure of the truth sometimes results in tragedy. However, no matter how tragic the truth may be, it would be an even greater tragedy to avert one's eyes from it. Very well. The court shall grant the prosecution's request. That's okay with you, right, uh, Chief Gant? Worthy? You'll live to regret this. Mark my words. Miss Emma Sky, please take the stand. Looks like Edgeworth has decided to take the horse by the reins. Now then, witness. Please state your name and occupation. Um, my name is Emma. Emma Sky. My occupation, I'm Lana's little sister and I want to be a scientific investigator. Two years ago, you encountered the serial killer Joe Dark of the Do Joe Dark killings. Is that correct? Yes. I'm trying my hardest to forget about that, though. I'm sorry. But I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to recall those events one more time. Mr. Edgeworth, please remember this trial concerns the murder of Detective Goodman. Is it an incident that was resolved two years ago really that relevant? Yes, it most certainly is. Well, okay then. He sure gave in fast. Now, please testify about what happened to you two years ago. The trip to yesteryear has finally begun. It's bound to lead to the truth behind this trial. I was waiting in my sister's office that day. A man came running in and took me hostage. Neil Marshall rescued me, but I'll never forget what I saw in that instant. The man raised up the knife and stabbed Mr. Marshall in the chest. It's a good thing you weren't harmed. I passed out. I don't remember much. That's understandable. However, please tell Miss me, Mr. Edgeworth, what does this testimony have to do with Detective Goodman's murder? That will soon be apparent, Your Honor. You've got to admire him for his courage, considering he has no evidence. Very well. The defense may begin his cross-examination. I was waiting in my sister's office that day. Two years ago, the defendant was a detective at the police department, correct? Yes, she was second in command under the then deputy chief of police, Gant. My sister, she, she was the best detective ever. Yes, I remember. Deputy Chief Gant and Miss Skye used to be quite a pair. I believe they shared the same office. That's right. I'd always sit at my sister's desk and dream about playing that organ. I wanted to play it that day, too. The, the police department and the prosecutor's office held a ceremony that day. Lana promised to take me to dinner after she finished her work. A man came running in and took me hostage. A man? Yes, Joe Dark. He was a... a serial killer. Joe Dark was brought into questioning on the day of the ceremony. We were desperate to get anything on him that would lead to an arrest. When he saw his chance, he fled the room, right? Upon fleeing the room, Dark proceeded to take the elevator. He must have been in a panic because the elevator was going up. Then he ran into Sky and Gant's office. There was a lot of noise coming from outside, so I opened up the door and had, had a look. Then, when I saw him, Neil Marshall rescued me. What was the prosecutor doing there? That day, there were two people present, present during uh, Dark's questioning. Deputy Chief Damien Gant and Prosecutor Neil Marshall. Almost forgot about Gant. Neil Marshall and his, just received the King of Prosecutors Award. Young and dedicated, he went straight to the questioning room after the ceremony. Assuming 
that would also be why he was the first to run after Dark. When Dark grabbed me, I thought I was good, as good as dead. And that's when Prosecutor Marshall came running in. I, I don't clearly remember what happened then, but... But I'll never forget what I saw in that instinct. Can you tell us what you, about it? Mr. Marshall jumped on Dark. Just then, the lights went out. The lights? It was just about this time of the year. There was a terrible storm going on and lightning struck nearby. So the electricity went out? Wait, wait a minute. If it was a pitch black in the room, you shouldn't have been able to see anything, right? Right, but just then lightning flashed again outside. That sudden, that sudden flash left an unforgettable image of the scene in my mind, I see. I told the detective about what I saw then. The detective? Yes, Detective Goodman. He was in charge of the case. Detective Bruce Goodman, the victim. So, you spoke with Detective Goodman about this two years ago? Yes, that's, was, that's what's so scary about this trial. And you told Detective Goodman about what you saw? Yes, but at the time, the words just wouldn't come out. That's why I drew a picture. A picture? Yes, I think she mentioned that before. Well, Mr. Wright, have you heard enough? Ask about the picture. This picture, the witness drew. I believe it has a very important meaning. But the list of evidence I was given two years ago didn't contain a certain picture. Witness, would you remind if we add that testimony? Uh, yeah, sir. What's up? Whatever. But it seems I it has been lost. You drew a picture of the scene you witnessed, right? Yes, I wanted to do everything I could to help the investigation. I can still see it now, whenever I close my eyes. That's strange, I took over the case after the prosecutor Marshall died. Yeah, I never received any picture. Perhaps the witness is mistaken. But, but I drew it, I swear, I'm not just imagining it. That picture that Emma drew, that reminds me. I guess I should check the evidence again. Well, anyways, let's continue. The scene that imprinted an image on your mind, can you please describe it to us? The man... Mr. Edgeworth, this little girl put all her heart into drawing that picture. And yet you would insist on denying its existence? Huh? Hey, I'm not the bad guy. All I'm saying is that as the prosecutor for that case, I wasn't handed such a picture. That may well be, but that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Behold, this is the evidence list for the SL9 incident. Please turn it over, Your Honor. Turn it oh uh, uh what? Oh my ah what's this? Yes, what is that? Hey, that that's it, that's the picture I drew. Indeed. Two men appear to be wrestling here. What's the meaning of this? What are you doing with that list? Me? Only the prosecutor in charge should be have access to this list. Huh? These lists. They're... they're different from each other. What? It would appear, Mr. Edgeworth, that the evidence list you were handed two years ago was incomplete. These two lists fit together to form one. You can see the markings here where they were torn apart from each other. So you see, Mr. Edgeworth, it's quite obvious what happened. Two years ago, only half of the evidence in that case ever reached you. What? Uh, what? <laughs> Order, order. But Miss Skye, why did you draw your picture on the back of the such an important list? Because that's what Detective Goodman handed me in the questioning room, Your Honor. Wait a minute. If this list was torn in half, then that means... Your Honor? Are you alright, Mr. Wright? Your eyes are bulging from your head. If the evidence list was torn in half then there might be more of the drawing on the back of Mr. Edgeworth's list. Yes, that's quite conceivable. Mr. Edgeworth? It's possible. Let's see. Um, is something wrong? Do you even have to ask? Sorry, Your Honor. 
there is indeed something drawn on the back of my lens. It's that, that thing. That, that, that thing? That thing that was dancing in the evidence room. Clearly, this is an act of vandalism in the work of a certain chief of detectives. I guess he was out of scrap paper? Evidence list restored. Yay. Very well. Witness, will you please testify about this picture you drew two years ago? Huh? Oh, oh yes, sir, your honor. What's wrong with Emma? She seems to be thinking about something when she was looking at the picture. This is the picture I drew two years ago. The flash lightning was so bright, all I could see were two shadows. After that, I must have fainted. This picture shows exactly what I saw in that instant. To think, a flash of lightning could burn such an image in your mind. Thanks to that, though, she was able to show us exactly what she saw. Well, I don't see any contradictions here. This clearly shows that Joe Dark about to murder Prosecutor Neil Marshall? The defense may now begin its cross-examination. This is the picture I drew two years ago. Did you draw this picture right after the incident? Um, I think I drew it two or three days later. At first, I was in such a state of shock that I couldn't do anything. During that time, the investigation team was reorganized. Detective Goodman was placed in charge, under the direction of Damien Gant and Lana Sky. Two or three days later, the memory should still have been fresh in her mind. Excuse me, witness. But can you please tell us why this picture is painted all black? The flash of lightning was so bright all I could see was shadows. So at the time you didn't even know if it was Mr. Marshall who had come to rescue you. No, I couldn't see him clearly. The lightning was so bright and I was knocked to the floor. You were knocked to the floor? Dark had a tight grip on me but when Mr. Marshall jumped on him, I was knocked away. I turned around. And that's when the lightning flashed. Poor Emma. I'm just glad she wasn't hurt. What happened after the lightning flashed? After that, I must have fainted. You mean you didn't see the actual murder take place? No, I'm sorry. The flash of lightning only drove off the darkness for a split second. Not only that, but the trauma of the situation understandably caused the witness to faint. Do you really need to torture this girl any further? Well, what? Hey, I'm not the bad guy here. Anyways, this picture... This picture shows exactly what I saw in that instant. Sorry for asking so many times, but are you sure you drew exactly what you saw? Of course, this is the exact scene. It wasn't influenced in any way from the your talk with the detective? Are you insinuating we have somehow manipulated her memory, Mr. Wright? No, no, of course not. I'd better watch out, or he might just find a way to cut my salary. I drew this picture before I heard anything from the detectives, so I don't think anyone's story would have influenced me. Mr. Wright, is there something that bothering you about this picture, huh? Oh, well, that's strange. She claims this is exactly the scene that was imprinted in her mind, and yet, there's clearly a contradiction here. Objection! No, it's not.
I don't know how to point out my contradiction that I'm saying, but... I'm gonna see if anything's changed since I've talked to it. No, nope, looks all the same so far. Do not torture, torture this girl, Mr. Bright. I'm not the bad guy. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, I'm torturing her. I'm doing the same thing by accident. Whoops. Sorry. I definitely have the percent evidence on this somehow, but I don't... sense I guess but I feel like maybe I was just like two steps ahead again I hate to be the bearer of bad news but this picture the witness drew contains a blatant contradiction what but I still remember it just like it was yesterday mr. Wright perhaps it would be faster if you simply pointed out the contradiction for us what part of this picture contradicts the autopsy report? The contradiction, of course, lies here. Take a look at the knife the man is holding. If you look closely, you can see the tip is broken. Even I don't have to look closely to see that, Mr. Wright. But Mr. Wright, look at the evidence. Did you see the murder weapon? Its tip is broken, too. If I recall, the tip of the knife was found broken off in the victim's body. It was the conclusive piece of evidence that proved Joe Dark to was the murderer. I'm afraid it's not that so simple, Alba. Emma. And where, pray tell, could you possibly see a problem? It's obvious, really. The victim suffered a single stab wound to the back. If the victim was only stabbed once, then the murder weapon should not yet be broken. Ah, uh, what's the meaning of this? Perhaps the knife was broken beforehand. Sorry, but I'm afraid that's not possible. The tip of the knife was found inside the victim's body. If it was broken beforehand, it couldn't possibly wind up there. That's right, but what does this mean? 
The tip of the knife was undeniably discovered within the victim's body. The only possible explanation is the witness memory is mistaken. That's why I asked her so many times if she was sure she remembered correctly. I believe you were annoyed at the at that time, but she was sure she remembered correctly. But there's no other way to explain the in this inconsistency. Not so fast, Mr. Edgeworth. There is another explanation. Have you forgotten already? About a little something called falsified evidence? You're treading on ice, thin ice, right? All I'm saying is that this broken knife tip might be the piece of evidence that was forged. You can't deny the possibility. No. <laughs> order, order, order. The investigation really was corrupted? Your Honor, please allow me to once again go over the events that took place the day of the murder. The police department and the prosecutor's office were holding a ceremony that day. After receiving the King of Prosecutors Award at the ceremony, Neil Marshall questioned Joe Dark along with Damian Gant. During his questioning, Joe Dark fled the room. Prosecutor Marshall chased after him and was killed by Dark. It is my belief that somewhere in this story, there is a lie. Hmm? I... I'm not lying. The man really was holding up a broken knife. If that's true, then there's no other way around it. This could not have been the actual murder weapon. There must have been another broken knife. What are the chances of being there being two broken knives? Another broken knife besides Joe Dark's? Could there have been one? If the witness is this adamant about the accuracy of what she saw, it can't be just explained away by a simple observational error. Mr. Wright. In that instant, Emma really did see a broken knife. I assume, then, that you have some information about this other broken knife? If so, please feel free to enlighten us. The murder weapon was already broken prior to the murder. There's only one way. Take a look at this. Here's the real murder weapon. Oh, my badge. My badge was the real murder weapon. Do I have to show the picture? Do I have to show the picture? I might have to show the picture. The answer lies in the past. Two years ago in the past. Right here inside this picture. This is the picture of the award ceremony. Huh? What is it, Mr. Edgeworth? It's the, the broken murder weapon. Notice the award Prosecutor Marshall is holding. That's a broken knife. As we early concluded, the knife in the drawing was not Joe Dark's knife. That being the case, the knife the witness saw was in all likelihood from this award. Order, order, order. Neil Marshall was awarded King of Prosecutors that day. As an award, he was given this broken shield and knife. When he chased after Joe Dark, he pulled out this knife. Being a prosecutor, he did not carry a pistol. This broken knife was the only weapon he had in a dangerous situation. But that... that can't be. Oh, and why not, Mr. Edgeworth? Because if the King of Prosecutors award knife was the murder weapon, then the murderer and the victim would be reversed. That's... what do you mean? I mean... This man raising the knife would have been Prosecutor Neil Marshall. Oh. Oh! But the prosecutor was the one who actually died. That's true. What's going on here? It seems Mr. Wright has been a bit too eager to jump to conclusions. Wait. I, I remember now. I remember everything. Witness? Mr. Edgeworth. What is it? Could you show me your evidence list again, please? His list? The one with that picture scribbled on the back? I knew it. This picture. I'm the one who drew it. What? You drew that? That's right. The list wasn't torn in half at the time I drew this picture. All this time, I've been trying so hard to forget. 
I must have locked this part away deep inside me. Perhaps it would be best if we added this here, the witness's testimony. Would you please tell us what you re recall, Miss Sky? Yes, Your Honor. First the knife mix-up, and now the blue badger? This should be interesting. When I saw that man raise his knife, I panicked and rushed towards both of them. I think I... I knocked away the man with the knife. Just then, there was another flash of lightning, and that's when I saw it, the blue badger. He wasn't in the room, but I'm sure I saw the, his shadow. This is certainly most unusual. Try impossible. The chief of detectives hasn't even designed him until this year. That would mean he didn't even exist two years ago. Yes, well, the defense may now begin its cross-examine. Stop, please, stop. Don't pursue this any further. Lana, what's the meaning of this? Please remain seated in the defense's chair. But you can't do this. I've already confessed to the crimes. Why can't you just leave it at that? Chief Prosecutor Sky. We've already come this far. It's too late to turn back. Silence. The defense will now begin its cross-examination. Bailiff, please detain the defendant. It seems we're finally getting to the core of the matter. When I saw that man raise his knife... When you say, that man, I assume you refer to Joe Dark. Yes, at least I think it was him. You think? All I could really see were shadows. The power outage that immediately preceded the incident is also documented in the prosecutor's office report. So then you... I panicked and rushed towards both of them. Why would you do something so dangerous? What else could I have done? He was about to stab Mr. Marshall. He seems convinced that Dark was holding, the one holding the knife. But as we've just theorized, Mr. Marshall was the one holding the knife. Well, I didn't know that at the time. When that dark guy knocked me down, all I could think was, I've got to help that other person. I think I... I knocked away the man with the knife. What do you mean, you think? It... it all happened just so fast, and I was in shock. I don't remember everything clearly. What I did, it... it it's, it's... it's kind of a blur. Miss Sky was almost killed before she witnessed the murder about to take place. With so much happening in a matter of seconds, a little historian orientation is only natural. I saw the man about to stab the other person who I thought was Mr. Marshall. I knew I had to stop the man with the knife. What you did was very brave, young girl. So then what happened next? Just then, there was another flash of lightning and that's when I saw the blue badger. Are you sure about this? Of course, see? I even draw a picture of him here. But... It was the chief of detective who th thought up this hideous beast. And that was just this year. The blue badger didn't exist two years ago. This is quite a... All, this is all quite verifiable. I know it sounds strange. I was surprised too when I saw him at the police department. I had this nagging feeling that I'd seen him before somewhere. Now I finally remember. Oh, brother. Just when you thought that things had caused enough commotion. Tell us, where in the room did you see him dancing? He wasn't in the room, but I'm sure I saw his shadow. His shadow? So you mean you didn't actually see his face with its winning smile and all? That's right, but I still remember it. He had three creepy horns. This is pointless. That thing couldn't have possibly existed two years ago. The witness must be mistaken. That may be well, but what's important is what caused her to think she saw what she did. Oh, and I suppose you have an explanation? If so, then by all means, please tell us what this shadow really was. What was... Who is the blue badger, really? I just might know. I know, I know, I know. It's the pot, but I don't know how to position the pot. I always get that wrong. Present the answer. 
Okay. Okay. Let's uh, show them the pot. Present. The mysterious blue badger was, in fact, this. But that's... Or, what exactly is that? I believe it's some sort of jar. But, Mr. Wright, that doesn't look anything like the blue badger. Indeed, it doesn't, as it is it's sand now, as it stands now. It's just a plain jar. However, what if we were to change our viewpoint? Our viewpoint. I've got to show them the correct angle to look at this form. Do, do, do. Something like this. Please don't yell at me. That. that isn't right. Yes. Oh, come on. Oh, it must have been close enough. <laughs> I hate this one. This is stupid. I need that to be on the bottom. This needs to be on the top somewhere. Oh, okay. Yeah. Do some of that. Well, is this a miracle or what? No one could possibly deny this jar resembles resemblance to the blue badger. No. It can't be. Order, order, order. The defense has proven its claim. The mysterious blue badger witnessed on the day of the crime was actually this. Although we all enjoy Mr. Wright's dramatic performance, one question remains. What's your point? What do you mean? So the bl that blue badger, that badger thing was actually just a jar. It doesn't change anything. I'm afraid that's where you're wrong, Mr. Edgeworth. You see, this changes everything. Indeed. Very well, then please tell us. What difference now that we know the witness saw this jar? Um, the murderer. The murder weapon. The location, I guess? Allow me to take this, these, ahem. <clears throat> Allow me to take this in turn. At the moment of the murder, the witness saw this jar. At a very specific angle, I might add, Mr. Wright. Yes, well, knowing this, where could she have seen this jar? Where? The location of the jar is shown in the picture taken on the day of the crime. It's on the shelf in the office of Damien Gant. But the body was found lying near Lana Sky's desk. The witness testified so herself. Yes, and it is these two facts that reveal what actually transpired. You see, the struggle between Dark and Marshall did not take place in Lana Sky's office. It happened on the other side of the room, in Chief Gant's office. Are you implying that the murder moved the victim's body from Damien Gant's office to Lana Sky's office? Yes. But well, why would he do that? There's no reason. Exactly. If there wasn't a reason, he wouldn't have gone through it the trouble. The only logical conclusion is that this, that there was a reason. Do you know what that reason is, Mr. Wright? I finally figured it out. So this is why Lana tried to stop the trial. It's too late to quit now, though. Please recall the witness's testimony. She said she knocked away the man who was holding on the knife. In the next instant, the jar was hit and flew through the air. Now tell me, what could have sent the jar flying? That would have been the impact the man had made when he was knocked into the wall. Ladies and gentlemen, if I may draw your attention to the picture once more. 
If the man was knocked in directly of the self the jar was sitting on, what would he have hit? Ah, the suit of armor, holding a very sharp and dangerous looking sword. Yet. And since the man was knocked into the armor was carrying a broken knife, he would have had to have been Neil Marshall, wielding the King of Prosecutors trophy. Now, Mr. Wright, you can't be thinking. Yes, there is another possibility of what actually transpired in that room. Another possibility? Of course, the perpetrator would have no had no idea, but nonetheless, I I don't know if I can go through with this. Mr. Wright, what what's the matter? Events took place as the defense theorizes, then the outcome is obvious. In that moment, assuming the man Emma Sky knocked away was actually Prosecutor Neil Marshall. You mean, Mr. Marshall died because of me? No! I never imagined her testimony would lead to this. So it was the witness who took the victim's life, and then proved so with her own testimony. This is unprecedented. What? What are you saying? I'm sorry, Miss Skye, but given the circumstances, Joe Dark murdered Prosecutor Marshall. How can you think it was Emma? How dare you try to pin the crime on her? Imagine that, coming from you. If you recall, it was you who admitted to forging evidence two years ago. The reason you moved Prosecutor Marshall's body was to keep everyone else from finding out about what Emma did, wasn't it? I assure you, Mr. Edgeworth, I had no idea what you're talking about. If you hope to have anyone believe your insane allegations, I'm afraid you're going to have to prove. Um, tell me. Do you have any conclusive evidence that proves my sister killed Neil Marshall? E evidence? I'm willing to bet you don't. Yes, it certainly would be difficult to prove this with the evidence. If we don't have evidence, then we'll have to rely on testimony. I'm afraid that won't work in this case. Both parties involved in the incident are dead. We certainly can't get dead people to testify. This has all been a wild goose chase from the beginning. Hmm. Touche, Miss Sky. Of course, that only leaves us with one possibility. You mean there's still another possibility? What do you mean, Mr. Edgeworth? I mean the possibility that the victim has left us a message. For better or for worse, Mr. Marshall did not die instantly. He may have left behind the name of the person who took his life, in one manner or another. That's... that's impossible. Well, Mr. Wright, this is the only possibility left to you. A message from the deceased. Does such a thing exist? I've, I've got to think back to the court records. The real murderer's name that the victim may have left behind. This message from the deceased is already in our possession. Mr. Wright, will you stop at nothing to prove my sister a murderer? Do not be mistaken, Miss Sky. Our purpose is not to accuse Emma of any crime. There is only one thing we seek, the truth. No matter how painful it may be. Now then, Mr. Wright, please show us the piece of evidence that convo conveys a message from the deceased. This is the message left by the deceased. This is that blue badger from before, right? Oh, is he going to just speak the killer's name? If that's the thing could, I'm sure it would. Looks like everyone's forgotten that this is just a jar. A message was left here on the surface of the jar. What do you mean? If you look closer, you can see a faint trail of blood on the jar. It looks like somebody wiped the blood away. Yes, but notice, for some reason, the blood on some of the fingerprints was not wiped away. Yes, there is a line here drawn in blood. So what you're saying is these dots were once lines. 
Prosecutor Marshall did not die instantly. He used the few precious moments left to him to leave behind a message. One that someone apparently wiped away. But blood must have seeped into the jar where the lines changed directions. Precisely so. And all we need to do is connect these points, and the victim's name message will become apparent. No, no, no. No, 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 Mr. Wright. What kind of message did the victim leave for us? Your Honor. I believe these bloodstains will reveal to us the answer. I've got to connect them. To, uh, 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 there's only one... Wait, what? His murderous name! It's a defense attorney's duty to prove their client innocent. That's why all I've been thinking about is saving Lana. After all my efforts, I never thought it would turn out like this. Emma. So this is the final message Prosecutor Marshall left behind. Of all people. She may not have meant it, but in the end, the one who took the victim's life was Emma Sky. Seaworthy, can't say I didn't warn you. Chief Gant, do you understand the implications of what you've done? What? What are you talking about? Two years ago, Joe Dark was sentenced to death. He was convicted because of his final murder. I believe you were the prosecutor in the case, were you not? Ah, yes, Worthy. Because of you, an innocent man was sentenced to death. Not only that, but you used forged evidence to ensure his convictions. <laughs> but Joe Dark really was a serial murderer. That was undeniable. I'm afraid that's not important. Didn't you know? We aren't defenders of justice. What? We're merely keepers of the law. Sentencing a man to death is no light matter. Even if there wasn't any cover-up or evidence forgery, ultimately the responsibility falls on the prosecutor in charge. Despite what anyone may say, this fact cannot be denied. What's going on at the prosecutor's office? They might have sent an innocent man to his death? How can he just stand there like it wasn't his fault? Order, 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 order! The, the gavel pounding fell on death's ear. Unable to settle the crowd, the judge declares a recess. Where this trial is headed, no one knows. Sorry, Edgeworth. I didn't mean to get you into trouble. Hm. Don't worry about it. This is my problem, not yours. Hope I'm not interrupting anything, pals. Oh, I guess I am. I'll come back later. Hmm. Wait, Detective Gumshoe, what is it? You've got a lot of nerves, pal, making a detective run all around while on duty. And to top it all off, you call me here? I've seen happier people at funerals. I take it Lana is having you run errands again? Let me tell you, this is the last time, pal. Here. She asked me to give you this to you if there was a break in today's trial. Evidence law? Edgeworth was talking about this just the other day. You must know the two rules of evidence law. Rule one, no evidence shall be shown without the approval of the police department. It, it, it. Is that right, Mr. Wright? It seems so. You could at least study some evidence law, really. The chief prosecutor also wanted me to give you this message. A message? She said if you're planning to take him on, 
You're going to need this book. Him? I guess I'll need to give this book a thorough read. Doesn't look like that'll, that book will do you any good now, though. All that's left now is Chief Prosecutor Sethus. That's where you're wrong, Detective, huh? Have you figured it out yet? Why I'm still sitting in the prosecutor's seat, despite all these allegations being thrown at me? Mr. Edgeworth, the real trial today hasn't begun yet. What, what else is there left to do? Your credibility's been all but ruined with this forged evidence you were unaware of. And Miss Guy found out she was unwittingly causes a man's death, and now you're telling me we want to do more? You've gotta be kidding me, pal. You're missing the point, Detective. Lana didn't murder Detective Goodman. She's merely stuck the knife into his dead body. That means the real killer is still out there. What? And we're going to expose him, no matter what it takes. This case has hurt too many people. It's time to bring it all to an end. The court will now re reconvene for the trial of Miss Lana Skye. Mr. Edgeworth? Yes, Your Honor. The inquiry committee is planning to impose harsh penalties for your actions. Thank you for the news, Your Honor. Yes, well... <clears throat> Normally, this is where the prosecution calls wh forth a witness, but, er, <clears throat> cough, cough. This isn't easy to say. You see, there is some concerns that you, Mr. Edgeworth, may have uh, stuck a bar struck a bargain. You think I may have manipulated the witnesses. I didn't say that. It's just that, you see, everyone has been talking, and... Very well, Your Honor. I have a solution. A solution? That being the case... The prosecution will allow the defense to call forth all for further witnesses. What? But there's no precedent pres precedent for such a proposal. Undeniably, this is an unusual arrangement, but a very effective one. It would prove that I haven't struck any deals with the witnesses. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, what do you say? Unbelievable. M Edgeworth has found a way to continue the trial. Very well. The defense accepts the prosecution's proposal. Then it's settled. The uh, defense may now call forth the next witness. Mr. Wright, you do realize this is your last chance. If you call the wrong witness, this trial is as good as over. The defense calls. The time has finally come to bring out the real murderer. Damon, Damien Gant. The defense calls Damien Gant to the stand. What does that have to do with anything? As the defendant's partners two years ago, Mr. Gant has first-hand knowledge of the crime. I feel we should hear what he has to say about it. Hmm. As luck would have it, he should still be in the courthouse. He would also be the last likely to have been manipulated by me in any way. Wouldn't you agree, Your Honor? True. All right. Bailiff, please escort Mr. Gant to the stand. Witness, please state your name and occupation. What is this, some kind of practical joke? I was just on my way to lunch. Your name and occupation, sir. Worthy, are you sure you want to do this? Your name and occupation. So you want to play hardball, eh? Please, please Mr. Gant. Fine. My name is Damien... Damien Gant. I'm the acting chief of police. Now then, Chief Gant, the court requests to hear your testimony. Oh, righto. What's with the grim face? First, let's clear up this SL9 incident. Oh, you mean the, that time when Lana's sister murdered that prosecutor? Personally, I think it's been made pretty clear already. There are still some things unaccounted for. Oh, like what? Like the role you played in all of this. Son, either you're a very brave or very foolish. You are aware, of course, that a police chief has all kinds of weapons at his disposal. Weapons? Sure. Take my testimony, for example. I don't have to give it to you if I don't want to. What? Is that true? I'm afraid so. The chief of police has the right to refuse to testify. Of course, such an action carries with it certain risks. Don't worry, I'm not here to hinder your trial. Just remember, if things turn out to be a big waste of time, don't say I didn't warn you. 
Very well. The witness may now begin his testimony. As I recall, Neil and I were questioning him that day. To make a long story short, we slipped up that power outage didn't help either. When I went to my office, I found Lana there. Apparently, she had already arranged the crime scene. As you can see, I had nothing to do with the forgery. Hmm. Is that where Dark was arrested? Him? He was lying on the floor unconscious. When Emma sent Neil flying, it seems Dark bumped his head. I see. Everything seems pretty clear-cut. If the police chief has the right to refuse testimony, then I better hit him hard and fast. As I recall, Neil and I were questioning that day. As I recall, a ceremony was held at the police department that day. Yes, that's right. I guess you could say I'm a workaholic. After winning his award, Neil was all fired up too. That probably is what, spoke, what spooked Dark and made him run away like that. Was the defendant Lana Sky also present in the room? I don't quite remember. At the very least, she wasn't there when Dark ran for it. To make a long story short, we slipped up that power outage didn't help either. So the two of you immediately ran immediately after him, right? That's right, but Dark made it to the elevator first, so Neil and I split up. He went upstairs and I went downstairs, I guess you could say. He got lucky. What's what this what's this about the power outage? Oh that? The elevator stopped all of a sudden and I got the shock of my life. Well, probably not as shocked as Neil was when that knife went through his heart though. That's not funny. When I went to my office I found Lana there. Could you tell us what you saw? It was a shocking sight. Neil and that serial killer were laying in a heap on the floor, all tangled together. Dark was also lying collapsed on the floor. Yes, apparently he hit his head and was knocked out. Next to them were those two poor girls, Lana and Emma. Lana was cradling Emma in her arms. Looking back at it now, she must have already known what her sister had done. Apparently, she had already arranged the crime scene. How can you know that? Because of the victim's body, it had already been moved. So that means... You found the bodies near Lana's desk? That's right. I think you said it earlier. It was my suit of armor that really stabbed the prosecutor. Yes. Anyways. As you can see, I had nothing to do with the forgery. So you're saying that the forgery had already taken place by the time you arrived at your office. That's exactly what I'm saying. I can understand how Lana must have felt, but moving a body and hiding evidence are inexcusable no matter what the circumstances. Is that how it really went down? Staring at the witness won't do any good, Mr. Wright. If you're going to stare at anything, you better s off staring at the court records. Worthy, 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 always the smooth talker. But which piece of evidence ties Gant to the forgery? Lana did admit to forging evidence, but that can't be the whole truth. Somehow, I've got to link Gant to the incident. Well, I gotta find the forged evidence then, right? Dun, 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 dun. Dun 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 You claim you had nothing to do with the forgery. But I'm afraid that is a claim you cannot back up. 
Explain yourself. Several pieces of evidence were found in your office. Take this jar, for example. That's the blue badger you showed us earlier. A piece of the jar was discovered in your safe. Not only that, but the evidence list I presented earlier was actually found inside your desk. It was found where? You see, Chief Gant? These articles of evidence uncovered in your office are both concrete proof that you have also played a part in illegal investigations. Chief Gant, what's the meaning of this? Oh, rival worthy. So you admit it to it then, that you were involved in forgery. Who, me? Or do you mean you? M me? Why would I have anything to do with this? Well, you were the one who snuck into my office when you found this evidence. Prosecutors aren't the only one capable of forging evidence, you know? Defense attorney, can you do that? Can you do so too? Isn't that right, Rito? However, Detective Gumshoe was present during the investigation. Worthy, my boy. Not even detectives are exempt from the law. Rest assured, Dick will receive his due punishment. What? What? If Detective Gumshoe's salary drops any further, he'll end up paying to work. <laughs> yes, well, in light of the detective's presence, please give us your testimony regarding these pieces of evidence found in your office and their relations to the forgery that took place at the crime scene. My, my, kids these days no longer know how to put two and two together. Let's see, what was it now? A jar fragment in a list? For all I know, you could have planted them in my office. Anyways, you can't prove when those pieces of evidence were discovered. If they were found after Dark was convicted, then they're worthless. There's no reason I'd participate in forg forgery. Rearranging the crime scene wouldn't help me out in any way. Hmm, Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor? Well, not investigating the crime scene. You should have been more careful to observe protocol. You do understand that I am the chief of police, right? There will be consequences. Oh. Indeed, I believe I will press charges so you won't make the same mistake again. My apologies, Chief, but would you mind waiting until tomorrow for that? Today is, well, you know. All right, Udgy. In return, though? I know, I know. That place, right? Uh-huh. What are these guys, telepathic? For all I know, you could have planted them in my office. Anyways, you can't prove when these p pieces of evidence were discovered. If they were found after Dark was convicted, then they're worthless. There's no reason I participate in forgery. Um, how can you look me in the eye and say that? Because I'm innocent. Remember, who was it that murdered Neil? I'm not sure I care for the, who, the word murder here, but in the end, the person responsible for Mr. Marshall's unfortunate demise was Emma Sky. Well, now do you see? Rearranging the crime scene wouldn't help me out in any way. Really, Chief Gant? At the very least, there is one very large benefit you, you reap from the, all this. Oh, I wasn't aware. What's this benefit? That would, of course, be the position you have. Chief of Police. Oh. The resolution of SL9 incident secured your promotion to Chief. That in itself is su sufficient and motive. <laughs> That's a good one. Huh? Do you really think I'm that incompetent? What do you mean? Even without that case, I was already in line to become the ch next Chief. The resolution of SL9 merely sp sped up the inevitable a little. Is that true, Edgeworth? Yes. He was going to be made chief anyways. Uh, yeah. Be careful when pointing that finger, or you might wind up being the one pointed at. So that means there's only one possible motive for you to commit the forgery. If you didn't do it for yourself, then you did it for someone else. Don't be silly, Worthy. You know me better than that. There's only are only three people I look out for. Me, myself, and I. There it it's out in the open now. Uji, would you mind if I change my testimony a little bit? By all means, please do. I wouldn't be anyone's accomplice if there was nothing in it for me. Uh, 
dun 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 Nothing in it for you? Sorry, but the only person I care about is yours truly. That girl, Lana's little sister, was it? If you think I felt sorry for her, you better think again. You're right. You don't feel sorry for anyone. Be tough on crime and tough on people. That's how I was raised. You seem to be lax enough on yourself, though. <laughs> oh, that's a good one, Worthy. Hmm. Could there have been something in it for him? Given his selfishness, would he have been have helped someone? Yes, because he wanted to have control over the prosecution office, too. True. You might not help out anyone for their sake, but if it would benefit you, you might decide to assist someone. Mr. Wright, it appears you're positively determined to portray the chief as a nice man who likes to lead, lend people a hand. That's not what I mean. Very well, then. Who is the person you believe Chief Gamp may have helped forge evidence? Chief Prosecutor Lana Sky, the defendant? I believe it's quite obvious in the light of the circumstances. Emma Sky fell victim to an unfortunate series of events. Who would want to help her more than her own sister, Lana? And as the chief can't, he would also have a reason to help Lana if she asked him to. That reason, of course, is self-profit. Self-profit? What do you mean? After the SL9 incident was resolved, Lana Sky was appointed chief prosecutor at the prosecutor's office. The person who arranged this job change was you, Chief Gant. But, but, how would he profit from all this? He would be able to use the Chief Prosecutor as his puppet. Essentially, he would acquire unchecked authority over all investigations. Do you mean to tell me that despite the Chief's formal appearance, he played with puppets? Oh wait. You mean puppets as in someone forced to do... Yeah, yeah. Keep up. Keep up. A minute. You assist Lana Sky in forging evidence. Your motive is to appoint her as chief prosecutor so you could control her. Right, oh my boy, you have quite an imagination. Let me ask you something. What? Do you have any proof of this? That I controlled Lana? For example, is Lana testify that I've done such a thing? Lana? She keeps quiet to protect Emma. There's no way she'd testify against Gant. I'm afraid without any proof, this all amounts to nothing more than mere conjecture. Unless that is also what happened in that incident. This incident? Or which one do you mean? Of course, I'm talking about the murder of Detective Good Bruce Goodman. The chief prosecutor has been acting strange throughout this entire trial, almost as if someone has been controlling her. Worthy, you'd better watch your tongue. I wouldn't want you to get hurt. Just what do you mean? What he means, Your Honor, is that Chief Gant is involved in the murder of Detective Goodman. Not only that, but the Chief is now making Lana take the rap for, to cover up his involvement. What? 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 Order, order, order. I said order. Mr. Wright, you. You can't be serious, huh? This... This is an affront to the highest ranking officer in our law enforcement agency. To accuse the chief of police of blackmail and murder. That, I, 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 it's impossible. Your Honor, I was merely re regulating what Mr. Edra said in easy to understand language. It's too late, Mr. Wright. There's no turning back for us now. It looks like he's the one who's deciding to go through with this. Can you prove this, Mr. Wright? That the chief, a high-ranking officer of the law, is involved in this murder? Good question. Regardless of his rank or title, Chief Gant is just a man. The question is, is he a criminal? I believe the evidence will tell. I see. All right, then. Let's see what Mr. Wright has got, and it better be good. Show us this evidence that ties Chief Gant to the murder of, of Detective Goodman. I mean, uh, this, right? 
This is the ID card list? Yes, the one that shows who entered the evidence room on the day of the crime. There was one ID on this list we couldn't determine the owner of yesterday. 77777777. Sorry, but there's no way you can prove that my card number is your number. What? How do you know that? The safe in Chief Gant's office requires a code to open it. A seven-digit code. A seven digit You don't mean... I'm afraid so, Your Honor. The code was 77777777. The same as the remain remaining ID card number on this list. Chief Gant, you entered the evidence room on the day of the crime. Order, order, order. Chief Gant, what do you have to say? Nothing. The defense search of my office was a violation of regulations. And I will demand Mr. Wright be punished to the maximum extent of the law. But right now, this court demands an explanation from you about the use of the ID card. Chief Gant, so you admit it? You went to the evidence room on the day of the crime? What about it? I'm chief of police. Whether it's the evidence room or the bathroom, what's the difference? I could go anywhere I want. Tell me. When you entered the room, were you alone? I always go to the bathroom alone, as I do with the evidence room. Detective Goodman wouldn't have happened to be with you that day, would he? Uh, of course not. Why would he be? I hadn't seen him in days. You hadn't seen him in days, Chief Gant? I'm afraid you've just undone yourself. On that day, you had to have met, Mr. met with Detective Goodman. What do you mean? This trial proposes is the purpose is to determine Lana Sky's guilt. No, it isn't, Your Honor. This trial's purpose is to determine the truth. If Chief Gant met with the victim on the day of the crime, then he needs to, to determine one thing: what transpired during the, that meeting. In that case, Mr. Wright, I'm going to have to ask you for evidence. Show us proof that the victim went to meet Chief Gant on the day of the crime. Huh. Um. Mm. Detective Goodman lost his ID card on the day of the crime. Or to be more accurate, Jake Marshall stole it. So Detective Goodman filled out a lost item report. He would have to had to give it the report to the chief of police. Yet you are in possession of the report, which means you can't be sure if it, he filed it. He filed it. How do I know, you ask? Because he needed to enter the evidence room that day. He needed to? Yes. To transfer the evidence out. Oh. Detective Goodman took the form to you, Chief Gant. Then, you accompanied the detective to the evidence room. I accompanied him? There's no other way the murderer and the Detective Goodman could have entered the room. Hold on. Let me guess what you're going to say next. I, the chief of police, murdered poor Goodman. Exactly. But wait, the chief didn't necessarily need to accompany him to the evidence room. He could have just let him let, lent him his ID card. Yes, now that you mentioned it, I believe I might have done something of this sort. Hmm. Sorry, but that's not possible. According to the records, your car was only used once. Yet, you show your ID card earlier. If you had really lent it to Detective Goodman, it would have been found on his body. N Chief Gant, you, you didn't. The murderer was most likely a spur of the moment crime for no one in their right mind would choose the police department as a place to commit murder. After mur the murder, you contacted Lana at the prosecutor's office. Why? To dispose of Detective Goodman's body, of course. You're forgetting, Mr. Wright. That the victim's body was discovered in the prosecutor's office parking lot. How did you manage to move it there? I was at the police department the entire day, you know. And everyone is aware that Lana stayed at the prosecutor's office after the ceremony. Everyone except me, it seems. Still, you're the chief of police. You have an entire police force at your disposal. Oh, so you, you think I just ordered an officer to do it? Hey, you, take this dead body over the prosecutor's office. I don't think so. Chief Gant, 
you left all the evidence we needed to prove how you moved the body to the prosecutor's office. And all this time, I thought it was a useless clue just taking up space. How could the chief have moved the body? Mr. Wright, show us the evidence. He moved the victim's body. Chief Grant used this. He used the screwdriver. This is how he moved Detective Goodman's body. What's that? A screwdriver? But what does this have to do with this case? Mr. Edgeworth, think back to the day of the crime. What is this screwdriver doing here? It's here because... Ah! I was asked to go by Chief Gant, no less. He told me he wanted me to keep it here in the prosecutor's office. In any case, on the day of the stabbing, I brought this back here. After the ceremony ended that day, I didn't plan to return to the prosecutor's office. But you did, because Chief Gant asked you to. You mean I... I... Body was found in the trunk of Mr. Edgeworth's car. I think it's obvious what happened. The body was moved by the car. Detective Goodman's body was carried in the trunk of Mr. Edgeworth's car, yes. Unless, of course, you have another explanation, Chief. Why else would you have, have you asked Mr. Edgeworth to transport evidence from a closed case? There's only one plausible explanation. To transport the body to the accomplice. Miss Lana Sky. Order, order, order. What's going on here? Is there no room for rebuttal to the defense's outrageous accusations? Think back to the photograph Miss Starr took at the prosecutor's office. This was a not this was a not a photo of the body being stuffed in the trunk to be taken away. It was exactly the opposite. It was a photo of the body being taken from the trunk. Chief Gant, please say something. I believe... Your time's up. My time's up? Sorry, Raido, but I'm having lunch with the District Attorney General after this. We have to get going if we're going to make it in time for the early bird special. But, but, the cross-examination isn't over. Remember, what I told you earlier, a police chief has all kinds of weapons at his disposal. Weapons? Like the right to refuse to testify. I'm invoking that right now. What? That is not a right to be casually invoked. There are certain risks to be considered. So you're going to just run away after all this? Run away? Don't make me laugh, Worthy. I stabbed old Goodman. That's what you're saying, right? But if you had any conclusive evidence, you would have presented it by now. Well, I... You think I had Lana dispose of the body? If so, then show me your proof and get it over with. Hmm. I'll say it again, Mr. Wright. Damien Gant is the current chief of police. This court will not tolerate any accusations against him without concrete proof. Well, Mr. Wright, y y your honor, do you have any concrete proof? Proof that Chief Gant murdered Detective Goodman and made Miss Guy dispose of his body? You have concrete proof. It's no use showing evidence, I'm not even sure of myself. No, Your Honor, at present, I have no conclusive evidence. Huh. See, Udgy? In that case, this court is forced to penalize you for allegations against the chief. What? Here's a tip, never gamble what you can't afford to lose, right -o? It seems that Lady Luck was on my side again today. <laughs> okay, Udgy, I'll leave the rest to you. I warned you earlier, Mr. Wright, this is an affront to senior officers in our nation's law enforcement agency. What? Objection. Lady Luck, hmm, maybe we should have a word with her. Mr. Edgeworth, what do you mean? There's one lady who knows the real truth behind this trial. We haven't yet had the honor of hearing her testimony. A lady who knows the truth? Another witness? In the absence of conclusive evidence, the only other method of proof is testimony. But Chief Gant has invoked his right to refuse to testify. There's still someone else, one more witness, who can answer all the questions. Raised in the trial, someone right in this very room. Mr. Edgeworth, who is this person? <laughs> Why are you asking me, Your Honor? Have we forgotten? The defense is the one calling witnesses today. Mr. Wright, does such a witness exist? 
He may not be willing to tell the truth, but we can't just stop now. Yes, Your Honor. The defense calls forth... The defendant? Miss Lana Sky. She was in the underground parking lot at 5.15 p.m. on February 21st. Her task is to dispose of the victim's body. In accordance with a certain someone's orders. Hmm. Mr. Edgeworth, the prosecution has no objections, Your Honor. Very well. The court will now take a final recess for the day. In 15 minutes, we will reconvene to hear the defendant's testimony. This court is now in... Hold on. Huh? Chief Gamp, I thought you were going to eat. Listen good, Lana. He's talking to Lana? I don't think you need me to tell you this, but if you can accept Mr. Wright's claims, there will be terrible consequences. That's right. Your sister will be found guilty for Neil Marshall's murder. Uh, this isn't good. Of course, you'd never support such an outrageous claim anyways, right? Just something to think about. All right, then. I've got a lunch date to meet. Um. Okay. If there aren't any further objections, this court is now in recess. Looks like we managed to stay in the game. Yeah, thanks to your help, Edgeworth. That chief, he's something else, is he, pal? Detective Goodman? <laughs> I'm not a detective anymore. Oh yeah, sorry about that. Uh, don't worry about it, I've already decided where to work now. At your office. My office? Sure. I'll take the place of that top-knotted girl you used to work with. Did he mean... Maya? Still, looks like we're all out of moves now. Chief Gant's done it again. How is it always... How is it he always gets the upper hand? It's not fair, he has the right to refuse to testify. Hmm, settle down, right? Remember what the judge said? But Chief, that is not a right to be casually invoked. There are certain risks to be considered. Risk? What did he mean by that? It's simple. If the Chief refuses to testify, the opposite holds also holds true. You mean he forfeits his right to say anything too? Emma, are you okay? Yeah, when I came to, I was in the medical office. I've been listening to the trial from the gallery. So she heard everything that's been going on. Um, Emma, I'm sorry for what I said earlier. Oh, no, don't be. It was the truth. You know, it's funny. I almost feel somehow relieved. Relieved? Yeah. Now I finally know what really happened. To think that all this time, my sister was being blackmailed by that terrible man. And she did it all just to protect me. Every, ever since her appointment as chief prosecutor, everyone knew, who knew her said she changed. Perhaps it was easier that way for her. What do you mean? What do you think I mean? To follow Chief Gant's orders, she must have shut herself up deep inside. To force herself to do anything and everything the Chief told her to do. That must be why she became so cold. It was all my fault. It's all because I, I murdered Mr. Marshall. Hey, don't go blaming yourself now. If you want to blame anyone, blame society, pal. Chief Gant may be able to fool everyone else with his forgery, but he can't fool my memory. I remember now. I knocked Mr. Marshall into the armor. I I see. Well, we better get back. It's time for the final act. Emma, why don't you wait? No, I'm going with you. I want to be there. When Lana tells the truth. Let's go, right? It's time to end this. Alright, let's finally finish this. Whew. Now then, will the defendant, Miss Lana Sky, please take the stand? Miss Lana Sky, you are the chief prosecutor. I am sure you're aware of what is required of you. But Mr. Edgeworth, you already know everything. You know all that I've done the, these past two years. Please provide the court with your testimony, Miss Sky. And remember, you are under oath. We want to hear the truth. Of course, the truth. Lana, no matter what happens, I'll always be your sister. Now then, your testimony, if you please. 
First, tell us about your relationship with Chief Gant. Everything hinges on this your testimony. You're the only chance we have to get Gant. I worked alongside Gant for years. There is no truth to this blackmail theory. I fabricated the evidence two years ago all by myself. When I found Prosecutor Marshall's body, I rearranged the crime scene. My only motive was to get Dark convicted. It had nothing to do with Emma. Hmm. Are you sure about this testimony? Your Honor, I'm confessing to a capital offense. Of course I'm sure. But Lana... If this is true, then that means Chief Gant has nothing to do with this. That's what I've been telling you from the beginning. Please, Mr. Wright, you've got to help her. She's sacrificing herself because of me. What, am, what if she's telling the truth? She's not. I know my sister. Whatever she speaks stiffly like that, she's hiding something inside. Deep down, she's really screaming in agony. Yeah, this is no time to start second-guessing myself. The defense may now begin his cross-examination. How many years, exactly? Ever since I made Senior Detective. Let's see, I was 24 then, so that would be 5 years? Detective Gant and Detective Sky were legendary partners. I personally saw them testify in numerous cases. You must have been a good, been good coming from the same school as Mia. Damien was a respectable detective. That's why there is no truth to the blackmail theory. But think about it, Miss Sky. You didn't murder Detective Goodman. You told me as much yesterday in jail. You still don't get it, do you, Mr. Wright? Any testimony you cannot present in court is as useless as idle gossip. I stabbed Detective Goodman with a knife. And... I fabricated the evidence two years ago all by myself. Did you do it to help your sister? Joe Dark was a serial killer. My sister almost became his last victim that day. I didn't want that incident to ruin her life. But what she did was justifiable self-defense. She wouldn't have been charged with anything. That's not the point. She was traumatized that day all because of that creep. That's why I couldn't forgive him. Lana, so that's why you fabricated the evidence two years ago? When I found Prosecutor Marshall's body, I rearranged the crime scene. You say you did this all by yourself? Yes. Would you mind telling us what you found when you arrived at the crime scene? It seems I was the first person to discover the scene. The broken prosecutor award knife that was stuck in the victim's bag. What? The prosecutor Marshalls died from the unfortunate accident. That's only a situation you dreamed was possible. The reality is, it wasn't my sister who took the prosecutor's life. Fantasize all you want, Mr. Wright, but I'll never change my this statement. You mean Prosecutor Marshall wound wound up being killed by Dark? Something like that. If that is so, what happened to the other murder weapon? Dark was carrying a switchblade knife. Oh, that was lying on the floor a little distance away. It was probably knocked away in the struggle. That's not how it went down. She's trying to cover up her lies with more lies. I'll just protect me. So when you found this scene like this, what did you do? After all, this is what everything boils down to. Yes. I broke off the tip of Dark's knife, planted it inside the wound, then moved the body. You planted the tip of Dark's knife in the victim's body? What? But why? Why would you do that? You, of all people, should know, Edgeworth. You've always had a good head on your shoulder. My head isn't that bad, but maybe I ought to ask for the sake of others. Why did you move the body? Why did you plant the knife? Well, I feel like she... It's obvious she planted the knife to... To make it so it appeared her sister did it. Or, not her sister. Dark did it. Um, why'd you move the bodies? When you showed up on the scene, where exactly was the victim's body? It was where you deduced it was, by Chief Grant's desk. But the bodies was found by your desk. Why did you move it there? The reason for that is simple. Let's have the witness explain this in more details. The reason why Miss Guy moved the bodies. 
the piece of the jar that shattered b during the event threatened my plan. Pieces of the jar? You mean... Yes, that wretched jar you showed us earlier. In order to show that Dark committed the crime, I felt it would be more ex expedient to move the body. So, when you first found the body, the jar was already... Of course, it had been shattered to pieces. If you look at the crime scene, it would be clear right from what happened. Neil Marshall was dead and Dark was lying unconscious. In other words, the jar must have been broken during their struggle. I see. What's the matter, Emma? Apparently, the jar shattered at the time of the crime was committed. But I had a feeling that there is more to it than that. There must be a contradiction here somewhere. Anyways, I committed this fabricating completely alone. Oh, yeah. Because he had to write the name on it, so it couldn't have broken, right? Miss Sky, I understand how you feel. You committed that crime two years ago to protect your sister. You mean the forgery at the scene where Neil Marshall was murdered? If that's true, if that's the truth, where to... to uh, if that truth were to be exposed, the past two years of your life will have been in vain. Even so, I am compelled to bring to everyone's attention a significant contradiction with your te in your testimony. A contradiction in my testimony. You testified, and I quote, The pieces of the jar that shattered during the events threatened my plan. Th that's right. Do you have a problem with that? It's a simple oversight, really. You see, a message was written on the jar with the victim's blood. Yes, the prosecutor must have written it in his final moments. Exactly so. And this is where the contradiction lies. In order for the victim to be able to write this message on the jar, it must not have been broken before he died. Ah! He couldn't have written Emma's name on Shatter's jar. Order, order, your honor. It would appear more information is needed in regards to this jar and his bloody message. We may be missing something critical here. Something critical. Chief Prosecutor, it seems you, you're as in the dark as we are about the truth towards which we're heading. What? Just tell us exactly what you saw. We'll piece together the information to arrive at the truth. Very well. The witness may now continue her testimony. I immediately noticed the blood traces on the jar, but it was dark in the room and I di didn't have time to check it out. To be safe, I wiped away the blood. The fragments were large, so I'm sure I got them all. All I could think about was wiping them clean before they were discovered. You mean you were the one who wiped away the message in blood? I was in Chief Prosecutor at the time. She didn't think Dark was the real murderer? That's why she tried to erase the real evidence. Very well, the defense may now begin the cross-examination. I immediately noticed the blood traces on the jar. So the jar was already broken. It's a miracle that thing hadn't broken earlier. It certainly looks as feeble as the defense claims. But not as feeble as the judge's judgment. You were an ace detective or who missed it. You were an ace detective who never misses a detail. Do you really expect us to believe you didn't investigate what was written on the jar pieces? Normally I would have. But it was dark in the room and I didn't have time to check it out. So you didn't know your sister's name was written on the jar? No. If I had known, I would have gathered all the pieces and grounded them into dust. Well, that helps my case. Lana, you do that for me? It seems you two might make it up <laughs> yet. Anyways, I just barely had enough time to move the body as it was. If someone happened upon the scene, you lose your chance to erase the evidence. You must have been in a hurry. I was. I knew I had to destroy the evidence before anyone came. This is rather shocking. To be safe, I wiped away the blood. I'm afraid this action of yours reveals what really happened. What do you mean? If you really thought Dark was killed... If you thought Dark killed Prosecutor Marshall, you wouldn't have wiped away the blood. What else? could I have done in that situation? Lana, I only had a few moments. 
there wasn't enough time for me to do anything else but gather up the pieces. The fragments were large, so I'm sure I got them all, but you didn't. But how could you see with the power out? It should have been pitch black in that office. A detective is always prepared, Mr. Wright. Even now, I always carry a pocket light and camera with me. Even I care about all of emergency luminal wherever I go. I never miss anything. I got every last piece, but that's a lie. The fragment were larger, so I got... I'm sure I got them all, but you didn't, because we got a piece from... Miss Sky, I believe this jar conceals the truth even you were unaware of. What? We found the final piece of this jar in Chief Gan's safe. In the Chief's safe? But how? I knew it. She really didn't know. There's something even more disturbing about that final piece. There was... still blood on it. But the witness just testified that she gathered every last piece and wiped the blood off of them. Yes, which leaves us with only one explanation. On the night Prosecutor Marshall was murdered, you were not the first one to show up on the scene. Chief Gant got there before you. But couldn't the defense have simply missed a piece? I'm afraid that's unlikely. The pieces are too big for anyone to miss, let alone an ace of detective. That may well be, but everyone makes mistakes. Even I once wasted an entire day looking for my dentures. They were in my mouth all along. <laughs> How can you believe? Have you forgotten, Your Honor? When this witness arrived at the scene, the jar was already broken. Oh, that. There's no way a name could have been written on the shattered jar. Another person discovered the scene prior to the witness. I hope you're not implying this person it was Chief Gant at the time he was looking for Dark downstairs. Besides, even if he was the first, why would he break the jar? The question is, if he did arrive there first, why did he hide the, that fact for two years? Well, Your Honor, can you answer us that? N n n n no! Wait, I'm not the one on trial here. Damon Gant arrived at the crime scene prior to the witness. He proceeded to break the jar and purposely hid one of the broken pieces. Question, what is the action, what is this action called? Fabrication of evidence. But, but why would Chief Gant do that? In light of what happened afterwards, isn't it clear? What happened afterwards, discovering the scene Lana Sky believed her sister Emma killed the victim. Determined to help her sister, she sought Gant's aid. Lending her his aid, Gant helped her create evidence that incriminated Dark, sparing Emma. And th therein lies the reason. The reason why Miss Sky became the chief puppet. No, I, I, I did it on my own. Please, sis, stop trying to protect the chief. I... I can't watch you suffer anymore for my sake. No, you didn't. It wasn't you, Emma. You didn't kill anyone. Don't believe anything Mr. Wright says. Defense attorneys make up their most foul lies to defend their clients. Foul lies? Imagine that coming from my own client. Hmm, I guess you do seem like the type of person that likes to twist the truth. Wait a minute. What if... We're still smack in dab, <laughs> smack dab in the middle of Gant's trap. Is something wrong, Mr. Wright? Lana may be right after all. What do you mean, right? So do you tell foul lies then, Mr. Wright? Miss Sky, please testify once more. But if evidence was fabricated behind your back, then Emma's action, actual, action, ugh, accidental killing of Prosecutor Marshall might also be a lie. But, but, I do remember knocking over Mr. Marshall, Miss Sky, if you will. I... I can't. There's something to be afraid of anymore. There's nothing to be afraid of. I can't read. I can't read. I'm gonna get a drink. This cross-examination may not change a thing. However, there is a possibility that it will, if you tell the truth. Very well. I'll testify about what I really saw. All right, the witness may now testify once more for the final time.
When I arrived, I found Mr. Marshall's body impaled on that suit of armor sword. Emma and Dark were lying unconscious on the floor nearby. When I saw what happened, I thought she did it. That's why I erased all the evidence that linked her to the murder. I had Chief Ant help me remove the body from the sword and carry it. But if it if it's all really was fabrication, Emma might be innocent. Unbelievable. The body was impaled on the armor sword. You were the only one who saw that. If only you had proof. Actually, I do have proof. I gave it to Mr. Wright just this morning. What? To me? It's a picture I took of the crime scene as I encountered it. I thought it might be needed. But I don't remember receiving a picture like that. Lana must have known. See, Mr. Wright, she really does have faith in you. Very well. Mr. Wright, please present this picture. I don't remember receiving any picture from Lana. Lana said she gave it to you this morning, right? I seem to remember getting something from her then. Let's check the evidence again. There must be a picture in there somewhere. Well, the only thing she gave me was this book. Is it in the book? Hey, there's a picture here. Whoops. Oh my, this this is the actual crime scene. No other detective saw the crime scene like this. Because I contacted Criminal Affairs only after I had rearranged everything. Ugh. Mr. Wright, that picture cut out from his vest. Could that be a cloth we found inside of Chief Gant's safe? What's this? This is a handprint, isn't it? That cloth. It had fingerprints on it. Whoever's fingerprints, those are... Must be the real murderer. What? But those fingerprints... They're yours, Emma. Why are your lips turning all purple, Mr. Wright? Anyways, let's get on with the cross-examination. So long as you tell the truth, we should be able to flesh out the real murderer. Very well. The defense may now begin its cross-examination. When I arrived, I found Mr. Marshall's body... Come now, Udgy. This is poor excuse for a trial I've ever seen. Chief Gant. What now, you want to make me out as the bad guy too? If so, I'd like to put in a word or two in my defense. I'm afraid it's too late for that. What? You already declined to testify. That means you forfeit your right to make a statement of any sort. This must be that risk we were talking about earlier. Just sit back, relax, and enjoy the sound of the noise noose tightening, or tightening around your neck. G -g 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 ah, uh, so what? You think I'm worried? Sorry to disappoint you, but I don't need to make any statement. What do you mean? The evidence will do all the talking for me. Even if I can't testify, I can still present evidence. Yes, that's true. Wait, you mean you still have some conclusive evidence? No, I don't. But someone does. Someone? So, what's your excuse, righto? Why have you been keeping quiet about it? You do have something to show us, right? Something that proves who knocked over Neil Marshall's causing of his death? Conclusive evidence that leaves no doubt for- no room for doubt. I is it true, Mr. Wright? Uh, if I show that piece of evidence now, Emma's sure to be made out as the murderer. Mr. Wright, if you have any more evidence presented now, and if you try to conceal it, anything, you will be the one appearing before the Board of Inquiries. What do I do now? I better think this through carefully. I can't afford to make the wrong decision. I, should I present this piece of evidence? The one that shows who really- No, don't show it. Your Honor, I don't have any evidence I can present at this point in time. What? You lie. Chief Gant, you- You opened my safe. I know you took what was inside. The conclusive evidence. I don't know what you're talking about. 
Mr. Wright, why don't you show them? We found it together. Oh, I see. It's because you know the truth, don't you? You know whose fingerprints are on it. That's why you won't present it. What are you talking about, Chief Gant? Can't you figure it out? Take a good look at this picture. See the victim's vest? Notice anything odd about the chest area? It looks like part of it's been cut out for some reason. You mean you had this in your safe? What? That means chief, you, the chief of police, have been concealing evidence? This is going to be the biggest scandal in the history of the police department. Impressive. To be honest, I didn't think you had the galls, right on. Well, I can't just let you pin up, up as a murderer. I'll tell you what really happened. What? You mean, you admit to it? I was the first person to arrive at the crime scene that day. It then occurred to me that I could use the situation to control Lana. So you really were manipulating her. I knew Lana. If I made it look like the blame lay laid with her your s her sister, that's when she saw the scene. She would ask me for her aid. So you assisted Miss Skye? I told her to arrange all the evidence. I had her plant the knife tip in the victim's body and move the body across the room. And I ended up using that evidence to get Joe Dark convicted. When I tampered with the crime scene, I hid two pieces of evidence. This was before Lana arrived at the scene, mind you. Two pieces of evidence. You mean those items in your safe? But why? For insurance, of course. Insurance. I was sure my plan would work, but it also... Always best to be prepared for the worst. I wasn't able to let anyone blame me for the murder that girl committed. You mean you were calculating that far ahead while forging the evidence? What do you take me for, a fool? I didn't make police chief by dumb luck. See that jar fragment? I hit the most legible part of Emma's name. I didn't expect Lana to go and wipe the blood off the, all the pieces. But if you fabricated all the evidence, what's to say you didn't fabricate the message on the jar too? <laughs> Some people just don't know when to quit, do they? That's why I kept one more item for insurance. You mean that piece of cloth? Come on, Righto. Cough it up already. I know you have it. What are you waiting for, Mr. Wright? So you admit to it then, Chief Gant, that you were hiding the cloth you cut off from the victim's vest in your safe. Yes, I admit. I didn't want to have to do that, being cheap and all. But it's a lot better than being portrayed as a murderer. Well, Mr. Wright, what do you have to say for yourself? Just a moment ago, you didn't have any evidence you could present. Foolish move, Righto. You should have shown it before it was too late. It's been a long battle. But the moment of truth has finally arrived. As long as I don't mess up here, victory is mine. Your Honor, I do have evidence to present now. Alright then, let's see this conclusive evidence. The evidence that shows who actually murdered Prosecutor Marshall. Let me verify this once more. On the day of the crime, you personally cut out this piece from the victim's vest. Oh, yes. At least you finally brought it out onto the open. There's a hamper on the, the piece of cloth. Your Honor, the prosecution requests that it immediately be sent to the lab for analyzation. This hamper on the leather... There must be have been the strong impact for it to be left so clearly. You mean it could not have been forged. It must be authentic, conclusive evidence. <laughs> You're as slow as the up uptake as ever, worthy. What? Think about it. Righto had it all the time to present this evidence. Yet he was reluctant to do so. Why would that be? You mean you already know? You know whose fingerprints are on that? Mr. Wright, do you really know? Who's ever the fingerprints belong to must be the real murderer. Whose fingerprints are they? Very well. I'll tell you. It should be okay now. Everything's proceeding as predicted. 
The person whom these fingerprints belong to is... Emma. Emma Sky. What? They're mine? I'm sorry, Emma, but why? Why didn't you tell me? <laughs> You're really something, Raido. You know this girl did it all along, and you still tried to pin the murder on me. So it's true. Tragic, but true. This girl really did shove Prosecutor Marshall to his death. How could you? You you monster! Miss Sky. you knew whose fingerprints there were all along, yet you... You acted like she really didn't... Miss Sky. it's not over yet. What? I said this trial isn't over yet. Huh. But I'm afraid it is over, boy. Not only this trial, but your career, too. You purposely concealed this conclusive evidence. That, my friend, is a serious offense. I'm looking forward to press pressing charges after the defendant is convicted. I'll have your badge, boy. What's the matter? Cat got your tongue? Aren't you gonna tell us how it feels? How it feels to be the one who single-handedly turned a poor little girl into a murderer? Before I do that, there's just one little thing I have to clear up. Oh, and what's that? Who really killed Prosecutor Neil Marshall? What? Chief Gant, you are absolutely right. This piece of cloth proves who the real murderer is. Who killed Neil Marshall, you ask? If it, it was Emma Sky, wasn't it? I'm afraid that's not possible. You see, this piece of cloth contains a critical contradiction. What? A contradiction? What is this fool babbling about? I'm talking about a contradiction, one that proves who the real killer is. M Mr. Wright, this piece of cloth, what could it possibly contradict? You can't, you tyrannical regime, it ends here. Behold, the piece of evidence that contradicts this cloth. And what exactly is this supposed to be? This is the picture Miss Sky took. Take a good look at it. See where the piece of his vest was cut out? Yes. His shirt is showing underneath. It's hard to make out with all that blood on the vest, though. Exactly my point. His chest is soaked with blood. That's only natural. His lungs, no doubt, were, pu were punctured. Blood poured out of his mouth. Oh, but that piece of cloth. Wait. There's no blood on it. Yeah. Since Emma Sky's fingerprints are on the cloth, there's no doubt that she shoved the prosecutor aside. However, Miss, Mr. Marshall was not impaled on the sword at that time. No, 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 this is nonsense. Now then, Chief Gant, let me ask you something. Prosecutor Marshall was not impaled when he was shoved aside. He most likely hit his head on the ground and was knocked out. If so, then tell me, who could have, have been? Who could have arrived at the scene before Miss Lana Sky? Picked up the unconscious prosecutor and impaled him on the arm or sword. <laughs> then to make it look like Emma was responsible for the prosecutor's death, said person the person proceeded to write her name on the jar with the victim's blood. A jar that they then broke on purpose to leave behind a clue. And make Lana believe her sister did it. Remember what you admitted only moments ago? That you personally cut out this bloodless piece of victim's vest? Ironic, isn't it? Though the very act of creating insurance, you proved that you were the actual murderer. It's finally all over. <laughs> that was close, Rido. You almost had me. Sorry. But you'll have to do better than that. I refute your allegations. What do you mean you refute his allegations? You see, that piece of cloth is illegal evidence. Order, order, order. What nonsense is this? Illegal evidence cannot be used to convict a suspect. Remember, Uji. Earlier, old Rito here concealed that piece of cloth. So, I'm not reading this again. Blah, blah, blah. blah, 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 blah. Well, that's true. The defense did refuse to present the evidence. At that moment, that piece of cloth ceased to be legal evidence. But that's not fair. 
Did you actually think you could best me in court? It looks like the, uh, the last laugh on you, son. I'm afraid Mr. Gant's claim is legally correct. Well, Mr. Edgeworth, true. Illegal evidence cannot be used to convict a person. Assuming, of course, that the evidence is indeed illegal. Hmm? Well, Mr. Wright? It seems, at last, the time for me to reveal my plan has finally arrived. Mr. Wright, can you admit it? That you purposely and illegally concealed this piece of evidence? I did not. I admit, I refuse to present it at one point. <laughs> so the evidence is illegal? No, it isn't, Mr. Gant. Huh? It seems that I didn't present evidence then. It's that I couldn't. What do you mean you couldn't? There are certain procedures involved when presenting evidence. No, Udgy. Don't listen to his lies. He's nothing but a coward. You can't really believe him. There is only one issue left to be resolved in this trial. Is this evidence legal or not? Very well. Let us settle this once and for all. Earlier, you refused to present the evidence. If you can prove your conduct was not in violation of the law, then do so now. This is my proof, Your Honor. Evidence law. What's this? I've done my homework too, Chief. Indeed, Emma Sky's fingerprints were on the piece of cloth. However, at that point in time, this was merely a piece of cloth, nothing more. What? You see, it's written right here in the book. The second rule of evidence law. Rule one, no evidence shall be shown without the approval of the police department. I found this piece of evidence myself inside your safe. It goes without saying, I did not have approval from the police department. Rule two, unregistered evidence presented must be relevant to the case of, on the trial. And there is the crutch of the matter. You see, at the time, it was impossible for me to prove the relevance between the cloth and the SL9 incident. What? What kind of nonsense is this? You want relevancy? Just take a look at this picture and... Sorry, but can you recall when was this picture taken? Present. That was shown only a few moments ago. N no He's right. At the beginning of today's trial, that piece of cloth was still meaningless. The person who gave it value as evidence was you, Damon Gant. You, yourself, confess to a certain truth. Let me verify this once more. On the day of the crime, you personally cut out this piece of the victim's vest. Oh, yes. No, no. It was then that you approved that cloth as conclusive evidence. Yes, you, the chief of police, personally approved this cloth. The only person who could have cut this from the victim's vest is the one who stood before Mr. Pr Prosecutor Marshall in his final moment. In other words, the real murderer. And there's only one person who could it be. Damon Gant, the killer was you. N mm. <laughs> I knew I should have gotten rid of him. That good for nothing scum. For two years, he's been snooping around the department trying to get something on me. Crimes are being committed every day, yet he insisted on hounding me. Well, your crime wasn't exactly petty. He wanted to reinvestigate the case. He recruited Angel Star, then he convinced Bruce Goodman. Detective Goodman? Yeah, that's right. If the evidence is transferred, I'll lose my only chance to find out the truth. Please, you've got to help me. Goodman turned him down as he ought to. Still, Jake Marshall didn't know when to quit. He stole Goodman's ID card and tried to take the evidence. Goodman came to me that day. He wanted to file a lost item report. I went with him to the evidence room. Then all of a sudden, he decided to speak out. What are you talking about, Goodman? Can you please reopen the investigation, Chief? 
We can't transfer the evidence out. There are too many questions left unanswered. He opened his evidence locker, and as he was talking the evidence the evidence out, he said, it's, uh, it's not too late. I'm going to hand all this over to Marshall. Well, to be honest, I was a bit taken aback by his words. I had a bad feeling when he came to see me, but I never thought he'd be bring up SL9. That's when I saw it. The Accursed Knife. I couldn't just pull it out. Doing so would have made more blood, making it near impossible to hide your crime. Even so, the blood was just pouring out. I didn't know who might stumble in, so I hurried to wipe it up. I was worried so much about the floor, I didn't realize my fatal mistake. The bloody handprint. On Detective Goodman's locker, or Gumshoe's locker. I used to be known as the crime computer, but everyone had to start somewhere, I guess. I was too nervous. I had no business doing any of it. Then you put the body in my car. I'm sorry, I couldn't think of any other way to move the body. I broke your trunk, but what's the big deal? You make a lot more than us detectives ever will. Grr. Leaving the prosecution's car aside, how how could you get Miss Sky involved in all of this? Well, she had as much to lose as I did if the truth came out. So you took the evidence from Detective Goodman's locker? I felt bad for having to do it. I also didn't have the time to pick and choose what to take. So you left the jar fragments in the glove? Yeah. It looks like I was better off being an investigator of crimes than a committer. They all did their best to get in my way. I've got to hand it to them. They do their jobs well. Much to my dismay. Fake evidence doesn't hold up very well upon close examination. You must have known that. Tell me, Worthy. Why do you stand in court? Me? You despise criminals. I can feel it. You and me, we're the same. One day you'll understand. Oh, believe me, you will. You're just one man. You'll see what it really takes to bring them down once and you try to get once you try to go it alone. Well, looks like it's time to say goodbye. Oh, Aji? What? what Looks like we're going to have to cancel that lunch date. <laughs> sorry, old friend. I'm sorry too, Damon Gant. I knew you as you used to be, long ago. You were once a fine investigator and example to others in the forest. I'm sorry to learn that you are no longer that person. Those days are gone now, Aji. Thanks for all the memories, though. Don't worry, you'll be fine. Now you have Raito here. And worthy. With these two around, you can't go wrong. In fact, I can hear them already. The Meldalis sounds of new blood, I think it said. It went too fast. There are two things I want you to understand. Yes. First, your sister never hurt anyone. Second, Damon Gant betrayed you from the very beginning. You see, Miss Sky, you no longer have any reason to keep silent. You're right. When this trial is over, I'll tell everything. All that I've done these past two years. From the time I had Gant help me forge evidence upon up, up until now. So, it seems all the questions raised in this trial have been answered. I'm sorry, Miss Sky. I couldn't get you out of all your troubles. My, my. What high standards you have for a rookie. I can see why M Mia thought so highly of you. Who knows, a few years from now, you just might make it to the top. I owe you my thanks, Mr. Wright. Miss Skye! And to you too, Mr. Edgeworth. You've suffered every bit as much as I have over these past few days. Believe me, I know how much of an ordeal it's been for you. Hmm. It, it was nothing. Liar. I was worried the pressure might break you. And yet, you rose above it all and guided Mr. Wright to victory. You've done well, Mr. Edgeworth. S stop it. I only did my job. 
In light of this case, it seems a good self-examining is in order for all of us. Miss Skye? Yes, Your Honor? You are innocent of murder. However, although the chief blackmailed you, the fact is you still acted as his accomplice. A trial will be scheduled for these crimes at a later date. Yes, I understand, Your Honor. Is there something amusing about all this? Why are you smiling? It's been a long time, Your Honor. A long time since I felt free of these heavy chains. Well, this trial has gone on far too long already. Regarding the charge of murder, this court finds the defendant, Miss Lana Sky. This, that is all. This court is adjourned. This court is adjourned. At long last, it's finally over. Emma? Why the long face? I'm sorry your sister didn't get completely off the hook, but at least she wasn't convicted for murder. She didn't commit. No, that's not it. Just now, after the trial ended. I can see why Mia thought so highly of you. I owe you my thanks, Mr. Wright. Yeah, we burr, 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 You know, I did my best too, but Alana didn't say a single word to me. Hope I'm not interrupting anything, pal. Oh, guess I am. I'll come back later. Wait, Detective Gumshoe, what is it? You're doing this on purpose, aren't you? Making a detective run all the way around on duty and to the top it off, you call me here? I've seen happier people at funerals. Hey, lay it up, pals. I'm only kidding. Oh, are you here because my sister again? Nope, not this time. I came here today because of you, pal. Me? That's right. I thought you'd like to see someone. Lana. Should you be doing this? She's still under arrest, you know. Well, I won't tell if you won't. Emma, I owe you an apology. It's okay, sis. Don't worry about it. That day, two years ago... ...was the first time in my life I ever panicked. It was all I could do to keep myself from screaming. All I could think about was keeping you from getting wrapped up in this mess. Sis, I asked Gant to help me cover up the truth. I thought I was doing it for your sake, but now I realize I was wrong. I changed after that day. I had to. It was the only way I could make it through the past two years. I know how much I was hurting you by distancing myself, but I couldn't bring myself to tell you what I did. I, I was scared. Scared that you'd look at me with those eyes of yours. I was scared of how you'd react if you knew. But sis, you were only doing it for me. No. I turned my back on you that day. In hiding what I believed to be the truth, I was deceiving you. Sis, I'm such a fool. It took me all this time to realize it. Emma, I'm so sorry. But sis, you don't have to apologize. I'm, I'm happy now. You're happy? Of course. You know, sis, I always knew that one day you'd come back. And now you have. Oh, Emma. Emma. No one can change the past. The only thing we can do is strive to make up for our mistakes. Why must we make up for our mistakes, you ask? Because in so doing... We can find the way back to our rightful path. And if it is from there that we can move on towards a brighter future. Oh, At least that's what I felt watching the two sisters make up. Mr. Wright, Mr. Gumshoe, m m me? Thank you both for all you've done. I'm sure we'll meet again someday. Isn't that right? Edgeworth. Edgeworth? Stop hiding and come over here.
Wh where was he hiding? I just came to say congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. Right, well, I'll be going now. Mr. Edgeworth, I hope you don't blame yourself for what happened. We were the ones who acted corruptly, not you. It's too late for me. No matter what anyone may say, I realize today that I can't correct my mistake. Mr. Edgeworth, not only that, but I don't even trust myself anymore. Chief Gant was right. You despise criminals, I can feel it, you're the same. One day you'll understand, you're just one man, you have to do the things, blah blah blah. I do despise criminals. I plan to, de to dedicate my entire life to fighting them. But in order to fight crime on my own, I need a weapon. It's scary. But I've known that to be true for quite some time now. But Edgeworth, who knows? Given enough time, I might have tried to pull something like Chief Gant did. That thought terrifies me. That's why I can't continue on as prosecutor. Edgeworth, don't you understand? Damien Gant, Gant and your mentor, Ma Manfred Van Karma, were both the best of the best when it comes to fighting crime. But they both made the same mistake. You said, in order to fight crime on my own, I need a weapon. That may be true, but think back to today's trial. You weren't alone. You were working together with Mr. Wright, and because of that partnership, you were able to present evidence that otherwise would have been gone undiscovered. Isn't that right, Mr. Wright? Huh? What? Oh, uh-huh, yeah. What is this, a pop quiz? Come on, Mr. Wright. Show him what Lana's talking about. Evidence, huh? Something that neither Edward nor I would have been able to find on our own. Uh... Oh, mother... This is a trick question, right? I honestly don't know. What evidence would we not have found? book? Maybe? It's the only thing that I can think of. That might mean something to you, but I don't see how it had anything to do with my part, huh? Mr. Wright, it seems you still have a lot to learn as well. I guess that wasn't the right piece of evidence. It's time for me to go. Mr. Edgeworth, if you'll excuse me, there are still some loose ends that need wire <laughs> Okay, whoops. Take care, Chief Prosecutor. Edgeworth, what will you do now? Well, whatever you do, just remember, you can let what happened kill the prosecutor in you, or you can let it help you grow. In the end, it's up to you. I know. It seems I owe you my thanks, too, right? But what I face now is my problem. Edgeworth, I'll be waiting for you in the court. Farewell. I'd better get going, too. Okay. But I'll be by to visit soon. It seems we both have a lot to learn and catching up to do. Here. This is a little something for you. Scientific Investigations? It's the first book I ever bought. Study it well. Thanks, sis. I will. And so, another case came to a close. As for the sisters, I have faith. Faith that their lives have only just begun. And as for me, I think it's time I start on a new journey of my own. A journey to rediscover myself. Well, 
Don't go trekking off yet, just yet, pal, huh? What is it, detective? There's just a little matter to be resolved about the chief prosecutor. You see, she isn't supposed to be out of jail like this. But I thought you said it was okay. Yeah, well, it may be okay with me, but the folks at the prison are a li little bit different. Huh? Basically, I had to bribe a guard in order to sneak her out for 30 minutes. Believe me, it wasn't cheap either. Huh? Way to go, detective. I didn't know you had a wild side. Yeah, well, <laughs> you see, Mr. Right here is the one who's be footing the bill. Huh? Huh? What? what you think I could afford it with my salary? You gotta be kidding me, pal. Huh? 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 Thank you, Mr. Right. You're the best. Why is it? I suddenly feel like I want to scream. Hey, I got an idea. Why don't we go... I'll go pay it off together. Yeah, that'd be a great idea. Come on, guys, let's go. Oof, the first game is done. Oh, two more to go. Two more to go. I arranged for a friend of mine in Europe to take care of Emma. I hope she'll be pleased to study under a top coroner. As for me, this affair has pretty much ended my days as a prosecutor's office. Still, I'll manage to find my way back to the field somehow. Then, I'll be able to investigate crimes together with Emma. Yikes. I thought I was a goner for a moment there in the end, though. They overlooked my unauthorized investigation of the chief's office. If we penalized you any more, it'd be worse than firing you. Yep, that's what they said. It just goes to show you, can't shake me off that easily. So I'm probably going to take a break from this for a little bit. I'm a little over it right now. I need to stop reading so much. My mouth can't handle it. Um, I'm gonna play something just brain dead. A brain dead game where I don't have to read. My new mission is to guard the main entrance and take care of Billy. You can believe it. I've been demoted to security guard. My partners keep an eye on me at the entrance for me today. I'll show them though. Someday I'm gonna make detective. Yes, sir. Then I can be just as good as Dick Gumshoe. Dick Gumshoe. It's the Blue Badger. Aww. It's seen its last days, I guess. What is it? Can't you see I'm having me a showdown with a steak lunch? Miss Star managed to sneak this into me. She's seeing one of the guards. Well, cowboy, it looks like you did it. Even gave Bambi back her smile. Can you make sure Billy and the gang get their water? Looks like we won't be seeing each other for a while. As a farewell gift, I put a new meal on the menu. The right way loyal. The top layer tastes as bitter as defeat, but the bottom layer is as sweet as victory. Kids seem to dig the turnabout theme. It's a hot seller. Make sure not to eat it backwards. That sounds disgusting, but okay. I'll never forget what that young defense lawyer said after the trial. Let's see what was his name again. Mr. Left? 
Anyways, he said he'd be doing it or something or other for, uh, how many years? Well, anyways, I've got another trial to get to, so I better be, uh, home. Oh no, I forgot my gavel. Sorry, gotta go. Ah, nothing soothes the soul like fresh country air. Still, something I do miss hearing you and your objections. Still, I can't go back until I'm a full-fledged spirit medium. Miss Maya, afternoon training is about to begin. Coming. Well, see you around, Nick. Mr. Edgeworth? Uh, Mr. Edgeworth? I brought you your tea. What's going on? Thanks for coming to see me off. I can't believe I'm going to Europe. Thank you, Mr. Wright. Thank you so much for everything. I'm a little sad, but I'll be all right. Whenever I want to see Lana, all I have to do is open this book. She put a picture in it then? Of you guys? And that is the first game. I'll probably continue it later on next week. I just, I need a couple days off for playing it, so. Oh, I'll be doing other little games here and there and probably playing A Plague's Tale here and there as well. So if you want to watch some of that, please follow.